So how on earth do you want people to be obsessed with you when you're not even obsessed with yourself? You have to get to a point in life where you stop asking people for things you refuse to give yourself. You have to realize it starts with you. Hi ladies, welcome or welcome back to the feminine universe. I am so happy to have you here. From as early as we can remember, we can probably recall being taught not to be selfish being taught to care, share, and tend to the needs of others. Some of us may have even been taught that putting the needs of others before our own is the best path to being a good person and having happy relationships. While these behaviors are noble and absolutely necessary sometimes, many women learn the hard way that living that way full time without prioritizing yourself and your needs actually leaves you exhausted, depleted, and resentful. On the other hand, when done correctly, becoming self-centered can lead to happiness, success, and fulfillment that most people never tap into in their lifetime. It can actually be the single best thing you can do for yourself, for your goals, and for all the relationships in your life. If you want to learn more about this, to release any guilt for taking care of yourself, and to embrace the idea that by centering yourself, you can actually allow everything else in your life to improve, then let's get started. So firstly, we need to clarify what we mean as we talk about being self-centered today, because people typically define self-centered as only being concerned with your own desires, needs, or interests. Basically, not caring about anyone but yourself. But rarely is it mentioned that being self-centered also means to be independent of outside force or influence or to be self-directed. And for our purposes, I want to go even a step further and define being self-centered as a lifestyle where you nurture yourself, your passions, and your goals so you can become your best and then bring the best version of yourself to every situation and every relationship which creates a positive ripple effect on everything around you. So this has nothing to do with not helping others or not looking out for others. It is about realizing that you don't have to harm or neglect yourself in order to help others. In this perspective, self-centeredness is a powerful tool for personal transformation that has a positive impact on everything else. Now that we're clear on that, I want to share four tips with you on how to live this lifestyle. Tip number one is get to know yourself. The ultimate goal of being self-centered, self-focused, and self-directed is to put yourself in a position where you can make the best, most informed decisions for yourself and live the absolute best life possible. But in order to make the best decisions for yourself, you have to actually know yourself. Would you let someone who isn't aware of your food allergies prepare your meals? Probably not because their lack of knowledge could be harmful to you. Same goes for when you lack knowledge of yourself. You can end up making decisions that are harmful to you without even realizing it. So as you start on this self-centered journey, begin to shift some of the energy you put into the outside world and turn it inward on yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? When you really know yourself, there are certain relationships and friendships you won't even entertain because you know, based on who you are, you can't be happy there. You'll have an idea what careers, industries, or activities to pursue based on your strengths and what you enjoy. You'll also know to get an extra pair of eyes or ask someone you trust for feedback in areas where you tend to have blind spots. Also examine your patterns. Why do you keep dating the same type of men? Why does a certain type of woman make you fume with jealousy? Know your pain points and your pleasure points. What puts an instant smile on your face? Why do you want the things you want? Do you crave prestige? Do you crave safety and security? What's your love language? What's your attachment style? How has your past contributed to that? Some people shy away from this work, but knowing yourself empowers you while making it difficult for others to mislead or manipulate you. 
some ways you can become more self-aware is by taking personality tests or quizzes. You can spend time analyzing conversations and interactions you've recently had and try to understand why you said certain things or behaved certain ways. Did something make you feel intimidated or defensive? Try to explore why. You can also gather feedback from people closest to you, like how would they describe you in three words? Or if they were starting a company, what position would they want you to fill? Now, no one quiz or conversation will capture the full essence of what it means to be you, but they are all useful data points that can help you uncover patterns of how you feel, how you behave, and how you come across to others. These things can help you discover who you are and how to make better, self-centered decisions for yourself. Tip number two is invest and improve. To live a healthy, self-centered life, be sure to invest in yourself and improve yourself. We all love when others give us time and attention, when they do thoughtful gestures or give us thoughtful gifts. A lot of times we use these things as a measure of how much they care about us. So if that's what we use to gauge how much others care, then let me ask you this. How much do you invest in yourself? How much time and effort do you dedicate to yourself? For many women, the answer is probably not as much as I should. I understand it's not always easy. Believe me, I do. But let me tell you something. Investing all your time, money, and effort into other people and other things and expecting to be happy and fulfilled is like feeding all of your food to other people and expecting to feel full. It's just not gonna happen. It doesn't work that way. And if we can be really real here for a moment, the truth is you need to feed yourself. You have to get to a point in life where you stop asking people for things you refuse to give yourself. You have to realize it starts with you. The better treatment starts with you, the respect starts with you, the adoration and the spoiling starts with you. Show them how to treat you through how you treat yourself. How can you expect others to respect you if you don't respect yourself? How on earth do you want people to be obsessed with you when you're not even obsessed with yourself? Give yourself the things you want from others. That starts with investing in yourself and improving yourself. Money and time are such valuable resources. By investing time and money in yourself, you reinforce your own worth. So invest in your education and your mental health. Invest in elevating your mindset. Invest in your teeth, your skin, your wardrobe. Understand that by investing in your fitness, you take control of your health and your quality of life. By investing in your appearance, you skyrocket your confidence and come into every interaction one step ahead. By prioritizing knowledge, you empower yourself and elevate your standard of living. And by learning to speak and connect, you're able to create opportunities for yourself that education and qualifications alone may not have given you access to. You want to invest in a mixture of tangible and intangible things. It's no secret that I believe taking care of yourself physically, pampering and spoiling yourself are all excellent ways to invest in yourself. But I also strongly believe that you should invest in yourself by pursuing things that can never be taken from you, like gaining knowledge and developing skills that will stand the test of time. One great resource that can help you with this is Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives and the sponsor of this portion of the video. This platform offers thousands of classes by industry experts that you can do at your own pace. And the best part is you can try it for free. I've been taking advantage of the photography courses, both iPhone photography and currently the fundamentals of DSLR photography. I've really been enjoying the platform and investing in myself that way. So if you've wanted to gain more knowledge on a subject, to learn or expand on a hobby, or to gain a new skill, be sure to check out Skillshare. And if you're one of the first 500 people to use my link, you can try it completely free for 30 days. However you choose to do it, start investing in yourself and improving yourself. Tip number three is focus on your needs, preferences, and goals. 
In content like this, this is usually the part where you hear something like prioritize yourself, learn to say no, put yourself first. I support all of that. I've said it myself and I stand by it. But I want to be even more specific and actionable today and say that you need to focus on your needs, preferences, and goals, big and small. In addition to knowing who you are, you also need to be aware of where you want to go and what you need to get there. How much sleep or time alone do you need to recharge and function at your best? What kind of treatment do you need in a relationship to feel happy and secure? Where do you want to be in five years? How much do you want to save up this year? A lot of people have a hard time prioritizing themselves because they're not aware what their priorities are. In other words, if you don't know what you need, what you want, or what you're working toward, how can you prioritize those things and put them first? On the other hand, once you get really clear about what your needs and goals are, it gets a lot easier to put them first. It becomes so much easier to look at anything that's presented to you and ask yourself, does this help me get closer to what I want? Once you decide what you're saying yes to in life, it then becomes a lot easier to say no to anything that doesn't align with that. For your best self-centered life, you do need to prioritize yourself. But in order to prioritize yourself, you need to know what your priorities are. So if you want to make it easier to start being self-centered and putting yourself first, get really focused on your needs, your preferences, and your goals. And lastly, tip number four, remember it's not always about you. To keep this healthy and productive and to avoid alienating people you care about and people who care about you, you must be able to distinguish when you should be putting yourself first and when it's time to take a back seat, when to lean back and when to pitch in because there are times in life for both. Remember, we're going for self-centered, not self-obsessed or self-absorbed. When you're self-absorbed, you're like an overly wet sponge. You're so saturated with yourself that there isn't room for anything else. Every story somehow leads back to you. You hijack every conversation. Your needs always come first. You always want to receive but never give. On the other hand, when you're self-centered, you're more like the centerpiece on the table of your life. There's still room for beautiful dishware and silverware. There's room for delicious food and drinks. But even as you enjoy the delicious food and appreciate the fine china, you never lose sight of who the centerpiece is. Being the centerpiece means you ultimately always keep sight of your well-being. It doesn't mean you should debut your plunging neckline dress at your friend's birthday dinner or announce your engagement at someone else's wedding. The line of being self-centered and self-directed in a positive way can cross into being toxic when you're not content with being the center of your own universe, but when you're demanding to be the center of others' universes as well. You can't demand to be the centerpiece on someone else's table. That's their table. Just like you have the final say in who is important to you and what you choose to prioritize, you must respect that other people have the right to be the center of their own universe and choose what they prioritize as well. I think we also know how unpleasant it is to deal with people who won't lift a finger for others but always want everyone to drop what they're doing and cater to them when they're in need. If you want goodwill, you have to show some goodwill. So be supportive, do favors, be generous, just not to the point where you're depleted. And remember to focus your efforts on environments where that energy is reciprocated or at least appreciated, not where you're taken advantage of and used. Don't be self-absorbed. Don't be entitled or selfish. Be kind, be thoughtful, be supportive, but also be self-centered, self-focused, and self-directed. I want to leave you with something I read that will kind of encompass what we've been discussing today. It's a quote that says something along the lines of, if you chase butterflies, they will run away. But if you create a beautiful garden, the butterflies will come to you. And that is the premise of becoming self-centered and living a self-directed life. 
It's not about being greedy, lazy, selfish, or uncaring. It's about realizing that instead of focusing the bulk of your energy outward, trying to aggressively chase down certain people, certain things, or certain outcomes, instead of overextending yourself to the point of exhaustion and misery, hoping you'll get back even one ounce of what you give, maybe turning that energy inward, focusing on yourself and tending to your garden in a way that allows the things you want to come to you can be a much better path, not only for you, but also for everyone you come in contact with. Because when you pour into yourself until your cup runs over, everyone around you will experience and benefit from the overflow. When you win, everyone around you will win by default. And what could be more beautiful than that? If you're ready to try and be a little more self-centered and give it a chance to change your life in ways you've never imagined, just write challenge accepted in the comments as a commitment to yourself and as a push for the other ladies in the community. Until next time, ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.